part 8 that's actually make him face the player when he's attacking. That way you can't just dodge so easily. Um, so, I'm going to... Oh, before we get started, this button right here, I keep forgetting to mention it, but it is super important. You want to click that, like, uh, you want to make sure you save regularly. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention it because I'm trying to keep the videos as short as possible while getting out as much information as possible, but very important. Very important. Alright, so we'll go back into the night, and we will set up... This is getting messy. I'm gonna... Let's see. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. So box select, and you can hit C on the keyboard to create these comment boxes. I'm gonna call this one patrolling. I'll just delete that one for now. C on. This way we can just kind of keep track of everything. This is his attacking state. So C attack state. One more of this one called attack trace. That way we can just kind of keep it pretty. Organization is key, otherwise everything just gets lost. So, alright, now compile and save that, and we will right click underneath it all and add another custom event called face. Oh, what it happened? Okay. Called face player. That way, whenever they're attacking, which actually off of our attack state, I'll go ahead and face, call our face player function. Yeah. And, okay, so we will do a branch to find out if they has attacked, <laughs> have attacked, I guess. If true, then we will right click, set actor rotation true. Target is self, yes, we want that. New rotation, drag off of that, hit find, look at rotation. For the start, basically, this is where we're starting from. Get world location. Hook that to the start. Back that up a little bit. And for the target, we will drag out our player ref. Get actor location. Boom. And then after this, we will set a re-triggerable delay. Set it to... Mm, I'm going to set it to 0 0.05. We want it to be quick, that way it stays in line with the player as they're moving. And then we will call our face player event again. That way it runs through the loop every time they have attacked. Because if you remember the attack state sets it automatically, that way they are facing the player when they get close enough. Let's test it real quick. Not working. Alright, why aren't you working? Has attack true. Set this to that. Get active location. Oh. Our text state. Call that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just hook this all the way to false. Okay, hook the false all the way over to here. I think it was firing and then forgetting when it wasn't in an attack. Whoa. Right. You gotta have a delay in there. 
So hook it to the delay and not directly to face player. Otherwise, it's just gonna be like face player, face player, face player. So try that now. There you go. He's facing the player. He's a little janky. That's Maybe if we set that to 0 0.01. Oh, and one thing we want to do, you notice he kind of was looking up into the sky. Let's drag this back a little bit. We will drag off the return value and type in break rotator. Drag off this one and type in make rotator. And we only want him to be going around the Z axis because we don't want him looking up or anything. We just want him rotating in place. So. Back that up a little bit. Oh, okay, so we're good. And now he should just be rotating right around. Right with that. Yeah, there he goes. So. I don't think he's actually... Oh, he's interacting with the shield. Huh. Alright. In our player BP, we want to hit the mesh, go down to collision, and in collision presets, go to custom. And we want to make sure that he's blocking visibility. That way, those traces will actually do like they're suppo supposed to. Yeah, it should be doing damage to her now. And just to test that, we'll actually set up our HUD real quick. So, under our blueprints, blueprints <laughs> folder, we'll right click, new folder, call this HUD elements. Because we'll have more than just one, we'll have quite a few actually. So, right click, user interface. Widget Blueprint. Call this Player HUD. Double click that to open it up. And the first thing we want to do is right click the canvas panel, wrap with a scale box, right click it again, wrap with size box. This will make it to where later on when you're ready to package out and send it to different people or send it to different people to test. No matter the resolution of their computer screen, it'll all be lined up just right. So in the size box, we will hit width override and height override. Set that to 1920 by 1080. Compile. And drag off a progress bar from the common palette up to the top left or wherever you want it, you know, whatever. I'm going to do the top left for the help. And in the progress, fill it up a little bit. I'm going to set it to a red color. You can set it to whatever color you like. I like red for health. Standard, I guess. Okay. In, oh, the appearance will have the fill color and opacity for percent. Instead of just setting it like this, we want to click Bind right here and create a binding. But the first thing we need to do is in our graph, in the event graph, get rid of pre-construct construct, and event tick. I'm having trouble talking tonight. But off of event construct, we want to cast to player, B, oh, player BP. We will off the object get player character and then promote that to a variable called player ref so that in our get percent we can drag off the player ref get it drag out get current health and drag off again and get max health this is why we set up two variables for it is because the progress bar can only return a value of 0 to 1. Anything higher than that, and you have to divide them by each other in order to get 
a value between 0 and 1. You always want to divide the shifting one by the uh, static one, because that is what will give you the right, you know, re right return value. So we'll divide that. When you right click, you just type in on the question mark, there's that line like that, and you can do float divided by float divide current health by max. Oh. Set that up. And the player BP, we will find our begin play node. I don't think they have a begin play node. We'll right click and type in begin play. Hold S, left click. Sorry about that. I'm recording these in a, a shop and it's got a metal roof and it apparently just started raining so but off of sequence we will create oh, a widget so create w get create widget the class will be the player hud we just made the owning player will be get player controller and then off the return value we will actually promote that to a variable called player hud because we'll need that later and then off of that one we will set add to viewport now we can actually see our character's health and there it is so let's see if she takes damage and it goes down they do not did I set up the tech Player hood. Get percent should be working fine. Player BP. No, no. Player stats. Current health. Max health. Oh. Because we got to set up our damage function. Alright, so in our player blueprint, we want to get any damage, event any damage, and we will set. Our current health, I'm going to make this quick just because the rain's picking up and I don't want to be bothering y'all's ears or whatever. We'll minus, uh, shift that down to the bottom one actually. Uh, if you have lines hooked up that you don't need and you want to just disconnect it without having to delete the whole thing, if you hold alt on the keyboard and then left click the line you can disconnect wires. So we'll get, get our current health. We want to subtract the damage from our current health and then return that. So now that should make it to where we can check and see. Come get me, boy. Yeah, there it goes. Now he's doing some damage. Although it looks like that 175 might be a little bit. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So. Now he's doing some damage and he'll face the player. If you want those lines, those red lines to go away just in your night's anim graph, just find that line trace. Oh no, that's right, in the night, in the actual night. Find the attack trace and for, dirt, ugh, for the draw debug type, set it back to none. And we'll box that off, comment, face, layer, compile, save all, because you want to do that regularly. And then, I don't think we have damage set up for the night anymore, so let's add that in real quick, which we will add in a new variable, call it health. It only has to have one because he's not going to have a, a progress bar for it. So set it to, call it health, set it to a float value, and I'm going to set it for how much is our character's base strength? Two. And the sword mod for that one is two also. So for testing purposes we'll set it to eight for his health. Right click, 
event any damage. We will set his health to, we will get his health, subtract the damage from his health, and then set it to the new value, drag off this one, do a less than or equal to, which is right there next to the question mark also, and uh, do a less than or equal to zero with a branch, B left click, and if it is less than or equal to zero, then we will right click destroy actor, which later on will set up his uh, death animations and uh, make him give the player experience points and figure out if he's going to drop loot or not. So, but for now, this should be good for testing purposes. So. Yeah, so he takes two hits and he's dead. But, while I'm thinking about it, off of the false in the event any damage, right click, do once, and actually let's just drag this down. Ah drag this down over here and instead of bringing another do once we'll just hook that false directly into the do once and then it'll do this every time he's hit the first time so, so now when I sneak up behind him and smack him in the back he'll automatically turn around and start chasing me to kill me so there we go now he's hurting us and we can kill him. So, yep, there we go. And then the next one will start setting up his death animations and stuff, because I think this one might be running. Yeah, 17 minutes. Yeah, I'll keep this one for a short one. So, yep, see you in the next one.